For, these are the areas that were covered in the study, and so we're going to briefly address each of those areas in the presentation of our findings today. As Joe mentioned, um, we use the um, ECAR 2010 Students and in Information Technology and Higher Education Survey. Um, wanted to give you a brief profile of the groups or participants that were involved in the study. This shows what ECAR reported in general as far as the participants of that study, of the national study. The student profile here at A&M Commerce. One thing I want you to, to note as we move forward is the age between faculty and students that completed the survey. The faculty profile. So we see that the age range of faculty and students and participants is very similar and that the age range of the participants in the ECAR survey was largely under 25% or 25 years of age, excuse me, 75% were under 25 years of age. All right, so let's look at the findings. We asked participants to respond to five assessment statements regarding their adoption of technology. Hey, Joe, I do have yours. I apologize. I had both copies. Excuse me. All right. Now we're on track. Again, we asked participants to respond to five self-assessment statements regarding their adoption of technology. The statements were tied to Everett Rogers' five categories of the adoption of, in, of an innovation. In our case here, information technology was that technology that we were investigating. Note that the developers of the ECAR survey refer to Rogers' early majority category as mainstream adopters. When we fill these categories with the percentages of respondents, we find the following percentages. And there you see where the mainstream um, and early adopters were the, um, were the two areas that respondents, both faculty and students, placed themselves. Okay. ECAR, according to ECAR, a student's technology adoption category is often strongly associated with their use and experience with informational technology, both generally and in the academic context. Students were asked three questions on how they view their own information literacy or skill level. This graph shows the percentage of participants who responded by indicating they were either very skilled or expert in three different areas. The use of the internet to effectively and efficiently search for information, evaluating the reliability and credibility of online sources of information, understanding the ethical, legal issues surrounding the access to and the use of digital information. Let's pause for a moment before we look at technology ownership and use to review one additional piece of information that we collected here of our students and faculty. We included a question on how participants were connecting to the internet. Here we see those percentages of responses. Several questions were asked related to what technology students faculty, and faculty owned and how they used that technology. ECAR reports that the ratio of ownership between desktops and laptops has changed notably in the last four of the seven years that they have conducted their study. We don't have the history of this data for our university, but we are able here to compare the ownership of technology reported by ECAR for 2010 with our faculty and student responses. Looking at technology use, we examined how participants use technologies on desktops and laptops. Here we see that most core or older technologies being used, as well as the percentages of participants responding or regarding use of the technology showing. When comparing the different groups of participants, 
Note that the percentage of responses is fairly similar for our faculty and students for each of the technologies shown. Students, faculty, and eCar participants are fairly even in their use of these newer web-based resources as well. The use of these resources is less than that of the core or older technologies during the same window of time. You would note on the, the previous slide, the scale of percentage went up to 100. Here it's going to 50%. So the use of these resources is less than the core or older technologies during the same window of time. And as Joe mentioned, we surveyed the end of the fall 2010 term. It should be noted that responses could have been related to the use of these technologies on PCs or laptops rather than mobile devices because that's the nature of this question that gathered this data at this time. And finally, here are a few other tools that fall under a category that ECAR noted as interactive communication tools. Again, all three participant groups are fairly even in their use. ECAR reports that the median frequency of use of text messaging by respondents is daily. The same holds true for our, st our students. 66% indicated they use text messaging on a daily basis, and faculty indicated 47% of them texted on a daily basis. ECAR reports the median frequency of use of social networking websites by respondents, again, is daily. The same is true for our students, 47% on a daily basis. An interesting transition is happening in the use of technology, from PCs and laptops to handhelds. ECAR reports that internet handheld devices continue to grow in popularity and use. And I'm making that statement about ECAR, this is our first year of conducting the survey, so we do not have that data to compare against what has happened here previous years. But in comparing it to ECAR, uh, we visually are seeing very similar patterns. How many of you use a handheld device? Okay, if you look around you, <laughs> smart smartphone, iPad, or such. Those of you who use handheld or mobile device does this data reflect how you use your device most often? We'll pause here to give you an opportunity to just kind of look at that. Paints a pretty good digital picture of you that raised your hand, which was pretty much everybody in, in this auditorium. The most popular social networking website is Facebook. MySpace lagged quite far behind based on participant responses. The, um, the MySpace response for eCar was 23%. Uh, for the students here at AM Commerce, MySpace was 21%. And for our faculty, 5%. And yet you see the high percentages of Facebook on the slide. So as you see here, the most popular uses also on this slide, uses of social networking websites, is to stay in touch with friends, and to share photos, music, videos, and work. We've been looking at, have been looking at findings related to the use of technology for work, school, or recreation. That's what the data to this point in the presentation had focused on, the questions related to just how are you using it in general, not in academics. Let's turn our attention now to an overview of the use of technology in courses. The eCar survey looked again at the core or older PC technologies as well as the web-based technologies. This information relates to all courses of all delivery types, traditional, enhanced, hybrid, fully online, just using technology in the course in instruction. The eCar survey included questions which, which asked participants about the technologies they were actively using as part of their courses at the time of the survey. Use of the library website, for us the um, LMS is eCollege, and presentation software and spreadsheets are within similar or even levels. We do see a greater difference in the use of video creation software and audio creation software. 
faculty use these applications more often than students. Although we find in this study that students enjoy and are coming to expect video and audio instructional pieces in their course, their preference is that it's in the instruction portion more than the use for themselves in, in projects at this point, and maybe they just haven't been, been challenged to use them that way. Also interesting here is the use of ebooks. Note that these are included in the core or older PC technologies, likely because most ebooks were developed initially for reading on PCs and laptops. Repositories such as CourseSmart are making the switch to provide ebooks which can be downloaded to mobile devices. Last I heard, CourseSmart would have this capability with all their e textbooks by this summer. And e college is targeting to integrate CourseSmart into the e college platform by the fall 2011 term. And then we go to the cloud. Cloud-based technologies are being used in courses as well, as we're seeing with this information presented now. We appear to be ahead of the game in most areas in comparison to the eCar data. Maybe just pause here for just a moment so that you can look at that data as far as in this table form. But we're ahead of the game in most of those areas as reported by eCar, the national survey. Again, this table was arranged by percent of use by A&M Commerce students. And a few more um, of the web-based technologies and the percentages of their use. Students network well with other students about course-related topics using social networking websites but we see that they rarely network or communicate with faculty using that medium. This slide also shows participant response to a question asking if they would like to see greater use of social networking websites in their courses. That's the last bullet on that slide. ECAR reports that other research has found that higher education instructors are a bit behind the curve when it comes to implementing IT in the classroom. They cite the Faculty Survey of Student Engagement, FSSE, which reports that 4,600 faculty members surveyed at 50 U.S. colleges and universities in the spring of 2009, the so one year earlier, indicated that overwhelming majorities of faculty were not using IT tools such as collaborative editing software, blogs, plagiarism detection tools, turn it in, student response systems or video games, simulations, and virtual worlds. The only technology that the faculty survey of student engagement reported faculty using extensively was a course management system. The same survey has findings that suggest that many instructors continue to teach using old school lecture-based instruction. Now again, that was information that ECAR was sharing, and it was being shared from 2009. Okay, and I think we have to compare that with 2010, and likely the difference of what a year uh, has made in some of those technologies. In our study, we asked students to respond to three questions related to instructor use of IT in courses. Percentages represent student responses in the most or almost category of response. So the numbers you're seeing here, students uh, responded to using either to say most or almost all. That's what these percentages are. Students rated instructors, and instructors rated themselves in our administration of the ECAR survey to our students and faculty. Regarding perceptions and preferences, let's, let's look first at perceptions. Students were asked to respond to three statements related to their perception regarding the use of information technology in their courses. The statements they responded to were, one, IT makes doing my course activities more convenient. That's information technology, OK? Information technology makes doing my course activities more convenient. The use of IT in my courses improves my learning. 
I get more actively involved in courses that use informational technology. Faculty were asked to respond to the three statements as well, but from the perspective of an instructor. The first statement, IT makes doing my instructional activities more convenient. Second, the use of IT in my courses improves my instruction. And third, I get more actively involved in courses in which I use informational technology. When considering the level of IT, instructional technology use in courses, it's obvious from this data that all groups of participants preferred a moderate level of IT use in courses. It's also interesting to note that the second faculty choice is extensive. Just this, this one shared, uh, I guess it does, I did put extensive on there. So you see that the second highest for faculty is extensive. So faculty are saying moderate to extensive use. Pretty good. As we move forward to the close of this session, let's switch a focus for a bit and consider the learning preferences of faculty and students in consideration of the instructional use of informational technology. This slide has learning preferences arranged by percentage of student learning choice. It's fascinating to see that students and faculty responded fairly evenly to each method of learning. We asked one open-ended question on the survey, which was not on the eCar survey. That question was, does the fully online course delivery format help or hinder the mastery of course material? The question was asked of both A&M, Commerce, faculty, and students. Given the nature of the responses, it was difficult to tally answers under the heading of helps or hinders, in that all of the respondents um, included an explanation of their preference. And so you don't always see that they said help, hinder, to be able to, to easily categorize that in those two areas. So we looked through the student comments, the faculty comments, and identified themes in relation to those comments. Here's the faculty online learning expectations. There were six themes that we identified when analyzing those faculty responses. I'll let you take a look at those. Just a moment. And when we turn to the student responses, you're going to see that the student responses were very, the very similar areas or themes. There were a couple of differences, but it was interesting that students and faculty were saying the same things that were needed in those, in this case, online courses. And m Commerce students were asked again to respond to the same question. Let me read it again. Does the fully online course delivery format help or hinder the mastery of course material? In all responses that the students provided with additional information to support their perspectives, there were seven themes that we identified there in looking at those responses. Those are shown on this slide. There were five common themes in, in, um, between the faculty and the students. Let me share those with you here. They're not on the, in the pre visual presentation. The area of interaction, self-motivation, course design and instructor experience, blended learning opportunities, student technology and language skills. The comparison of these themes and is in your handout that's also in your packet. If you want to look a little bit more closely at, at um, the information that I just presented that was, was not on the slide. All right, this ends the um, presentation of our findings, and Joe is coming to um, close this session. <laughs>